ngà lơ ngà lơ bù dì yê quá bân quá bân bù dì yê ngà lơ ngà lơ bù dì yê ngà lơ bà mìn bù dì yê bà mìn yong gà kù dì yê bà mìn yong gà ngà dì yê dù dù bà mìn ngà dì yê dù dù bà mìn ngà dì yê ngà lơ ngà lơ quá bân yê quá bân quá bân ngà lơ yê ngà lơ ngà lơ bà gì yê ngà lơ mù dì nè ngà lơ kì yê When you're given the task of introducing His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama to your hometown, where do you begin? This is a man who is one of the foremost leaders in compassion, humanity, and peace. His Holiness teaches us that we're all the same. No matter where we're from, what we possess, what we do, we're all human. We all deserve the same happiness, compassion, and peace as everybody else. So without any further ado, I would like to welcome you, the Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, Tenzin Gyatso. Thank you, thank you. Well. Yeah, yeah, good, sit, sit down. <laughs> when I speak to people, to public, I always consider myself as another human being, just like you. That's important, you see, thinking, same human being. Then, some of my experience may be used by you. If you consider me something different, then my experience no relevant, where? Like that. So, actually, uh, Seven billion human beings, maybe Australians, exception. <laughs> Geographically, you little bit isolated. <laughs> so, actually, seven billion human beings, mentally, emotionally, physically. So, because of that, you see. I also have the experience, sometimes, uh, dis disturbed mind. You also. So in the meantime, uh, when disturbed mind about to come, use uh, another part of our mind, you see, uh, to face that disturbed mind uh, try to go down. We all have the same potential. We have the same brain. Then, seven billion human beings, from the birth, we all want happy life. Even in the mother's womb, the unborn child, if they want, for the whole day, happy, happiness, do not have suffering. Sometimes you see the child, unborn child, uncomfortable. My mother, she told me, when the unborn child, yeah, uh, some uncomfortable feeling, then uh, in mother's womb, go like that. I, I think some of you may have same experience, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So the child, if they feel okay, then rest like that. 
so uh, right from the beginning our, our life right from the beginning till death we all want happy life and we all have the right to be a happy person so now so therefore we all is the same sort of was the uh, same human being same potential the same desire same right then i want to share some of my experience i lost my freedom uh, at age 16 then age 24 i lost my own country lot of problems lost over uh, 56 years Firstly, as a refugee, but because of the help from Indian government and the Indian public, so I think among refugees, uh, she seems uh, quite a successful refugee community. However, we still. and then situation inside it's a quite so sort of sad and the people really as they trust me so more person then however during these difficult as the time or difficult life best of friend best advice advisor is my brain and my heart we have this marvelous human brain we can see things as a true more wider perspective even some tragic very sad thing if we look from different angle then it is sometimes is we can see that a tragic situation one way of course very bad very sad but if you look from different angle uh, one sort of sad or said they Uh, because of the tragic situation could be uh, some helpful i think we human being generally speaking our life become very easy then some then sometimes we see such people when they come across a little problem then their mind really asoda asoda Uh, uh, unable to bear uh, people who pass through some difficulties. If that person, if she can keep inner strength, determination, then it's a such people really are becoming much more realistic. much more sort of kasota much much inner strength i notice in europe elder generation who really experience during war and after war difficult life so such people really hardened their life their mental attitude then you see just a frank informal way oh then 
we can really feel our human brothers, sisters, sort of feeling. Too much formality. Then you see you yourself distance. So I grown up too much formality in Lhasa, in Tibet. So I really fed up. So after I become a refugee, now no need uh, serious concern about these things. So uh, then meet a variety of people, non believer or indigenous people, or people from different sort of Kasoda uh, profession, and particularly scientists, and people from uh, various different sort of tradition. Immense help, also enrich, enrich, as my knowledge, or in cases, my own practice. Then visit a different part of the world, meet different people. Then, and also, you see, seeing a lot of problems, essentially our own creation. Then I develop real conviction. Seven billion human beings are the same. Uh, we are social animal. Today's reality, uh, like global warming or global economy, now national boundary, religious boundary, no relevant. So we really need a sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. I believe that. And with that sort of feeling, wherever I go, whenever I talk, I feel we are saying I'm one of them. So uh, no longer any sort of feeling of nervousness. <laughs> I just sit tell a meet, talk, the, like one of old friends. So long, human face there. So that's sufficient, sort of, sufficient to introduce. Right? No need their position or their profession or their family background or social background. No need. These are not important. No. So then immediately, see, we, we can so that we can so that, uh, communicate or sort of that interaction. So now uh, I fully committed promotion of uh, oneness of seven billion human beings. And of course, I am Buddhist practitioner. We always pray, entire sentient being, mother sentient being. If that prayer, not hypocrisy, you are serious, then other galaxies, in any way, no have, we have no direct or indirect sort of, because of the communication or contact. So this small planet, the other sentient being, we, can, we cannot communicate. Human being, seven human being, uh, you see, we can, we can do something. So here, Tropic Kasa, give it, uh, give it, because receiving. There's actually some kind of meditation. But here, in practical way, Consider entire human being, uh, same human being, all have a right to achieve happy life. So, whatever way, helping them. That's a giving. And whenever you met some people who really passing through difficulties, and at least you see, show your sense of care.
Ezra, or that is the day, their sorrow, try to, their sadness, try to share, take as much as you can. Let those needy people help, whatever way. So that's the real meaning of take and give. So I think, uh, frankly speaking, actions or the practice of uh, as a give and take, uh, take and give, uh, not easy, but on cushion and meditate, uh, take and giving, quite easy. <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, sometimes our religious practice becomes a little bit hypocritical way or saying something very nice. And my own case, I always talk importance of love. Uh, uh, but if I myself not practice seriously, then there's hypocrisy. So we should be sincere, truthful, honest, and particularly like me, people who follow different religious traditions. We should be serious, sincere. Otherwise, we can see corrupted sort of religious believer, including Buddhist and Tibetan Buddhist also. Some really corrupted. So, whether we accept religion or not, up to individual. Once we accept, we should be serious. So, so the main sort of practice, kasachuti, take and give. For my own experience, very useful. Sometimes, you see, there are some people you see, who create some problem, and then visualize these people and develop a sense of concern of their well-being. Then with sort of strong sort of compassionate sort of mental attitude, then take their wrong doings, their wrong motivation, and give them positive motivation, such as love, forgiveness, tolerance, like that. So this may not helpful to actual problem, but mentally, immense benefit. Usually when we come across some trouble, or particularly trouble who created by another human being, in most cases your neighbor, uh, then we should practice this. Really immense help to keep your compassionate mind. More compassionate mind there, anger, uh, hatred. Even though developed very sort of weak way, because the counter force you deliberately try to promote. Emotion world, uh, there are almost as a thousand different emotions. So, like external matter, if we uh, analyze these emotions, then there are a lot of sort of contradictory emotions, such as anger and sense of love. So, what's the cause of a contradiction? So, more sense of love develop, anger reduce. So, this is uh, no question, not question of religious believer, even normal people. I think uh, anyone have experience when you some physical sort of sickness or illness and go to a hospital, and any doctor uh, ever sort of advise you, well, you should be more angry person, your illness reduce. Any person, Ever get that kind of advice? No, I don't think. 
some daughter there. <laughs> Do you ever advise like that? Or oh, you should be more angry, more angry, red face, like that. That's the best medicine for your health. Can you say that? No. Oh. The other hand, is the doctor say, oh, be easy, relax, relax. Relax means peace of mind. Oh, nice bed, and nice furniture, a nice friend. Remember, but mentally, not much anger, not much suspicion. Uh, then that person uh, actually not relaxing or rest. Relaxing, rest means even you see poor house or even so one because of the, because of the open place. Uh, you see nothing but completely peace. That's a relax. So relax really means mental state. Mental state, calm. No, or say there, because of that, because of the uh, agitated mind, or too much stress, complete rest. So therefore, even you see, uh, I think human basic nature. You see, the relax means peace of mind. So if uh, the bird here, lot of big sort of house, and I think there must be many, because of supermarket, supermarket, many shops. Have you ever find a shop which is selling peace of mind? So if you, if I go shopping center and shout, I would like to buy with several dollars a piece of mind. I think people say, oh, that person now something, uh, something mad. So I think we, uh, we know peace of mind is within, not from external thing, yet, we always think about money, about external material value, not thinking or inner value. So, we everyone want happy life, peaceful life, the ultimate source of peace within yourself. That I learned now, now 80 years old. Peace of mind really is the best friend. Perhaps I want to tease my friend or doctor. A peace of mind is best doctor. Uh, so the best doctor keep here, then external doctor become jobless. <laughs> no work. <laughs> so like that. So therefore, uh, now is my main point is we have to pay more attention about our inner potential, inner value, irrespective whether religious believer or not. So long we are human being, so long we have this emotion, so our inner value, which we developed from the from the mother's womb. And then next few years, you see, we grown up uh, with tremendous affection from our mother. So that's where our life start. So that times experience really absorbed in our blood. So whole life, constant anger, fear, according to some medical scientist, actually uh, eating our immune system. And when we constantly keep the compassionate mind, immense help to sustain our immune system. Then longevity is where our life also, I think, best way to get 
healthy body and a long life, very much rich with inner peace. Then happy family, also very much related with this. And a happy community related with this. So therefore, logically, happy humanity in order to create happy humanity, we have to pay more attention about our inner value. So therefore, uh, with help of some scientists, uh, some educationists, uh, last more than 10 years, we actually now carrying serious experiment uh, and serious discussion how to introduce in existing modern secular education these education about warm heartedness not relying on religious belief simply use our common experience and common sense and scientific finding so hopefully uh, although it's some area in America and also in Canada you see, already uh, some institution, some education institution, some school, already as a carry some sort of what's today, experimental sort of what's that, a project. So I think within a few years, I think we may develop a certain sort of curriculum which can fix, which can suitable in secular education field. So that I want to inform you, a uh, number of sort of people, as I mentioned earlier, scientists, educationists, we already sort of work in that. Now in Europe also, in India also, like that. So therefore, that I want to, sh to share with you. So, uh, today, modern life Sim seems to see much more uh, oriented about material value. Education itself, existing education system itself, oriented about material value. So that's not adequate in order to build happy humanity, happy society. Then, in order to promote these things, relying on religion, then today, out of 7 billion, over 1 billion non-believer. Among the believers also, some, I think, a little bit uh, corrupted believer there. Yeah. So that is, uh, I mean, uh, not due to something wrong with the religion, no. But the people who follow religion, they lacking real conviction about moral principle. So religious people in the materialistic life, uh, sometimes you see a lot of sort of cause of the impact from existing sort of environment. And due to lack of firm conviction here, then is this spoil. So I think uh, in order to create happy humanity, education has a very, very important role. There, not only because of the oriented material value or science and technology, generally these things are meant for uh, science. Actually, you see, should cover external matters, and mind. And the classical sort of scientific thinking, mind is something different because of something outside the field of scientific research. Later part of 20th century, now changing, and now this is the beginning of 21st century, now brain specialists and medical scientists, now they, more and more people, now showing uh, the for health, for healthy body, 
as I mentioned earlier, peace of mind, something very important. Then brain specialist. They already noticed through some form of meditation or training of mind, actually effect immensely our brain. So they begin to feel, oh, beside brain, there are some other sort of a phenomena which affect our brain. So now, I think field of science also now gradually now expanding. Yeah. I think that's very important. Like that. So I think, uh, I believe science. I often use it expressing, I am half Buddhist monk, half scientist. So I really uh, admire genuine scientists. Their mind very open, unbiased. Till there's something, till there's the proof through uh, a today experiment. Then you see they accept. That's very good. So therefore, now I think the, the next few decades, I think uh, the science eventually will uh, include science of mind. It's quite important. Like that. So, 80 years person, difficult life, I found best reliable friend is our own this human common sense, intelligence, and warm-heartedness. So that's, this is my so today, message or my suggestion. Please think more. If you feel uh, something worthy to think and experiment, then please do. If you think this is not much interest, not much sort of relevant, then not important. You, see, you carry your own way of life and no need botheration. So these topics remain in this hall. When you, when you go outside, forget these things. <laughs> if you feel some sort of, uh, you see, at least to some sense, then think more. And you see, you see, investigation about our mind, our head, our brain is laboratory. No need a big mission. Think, 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 think. Clear. So, I want to, to share that. Then, now I'm waiting question. What do you feel? Uh, we have two pages of questions so I'll try to get to. Okay. <laughs> but this is very enlightening, it's great. Uh, Catherine of Perth asks a question that relates to your last answer when you were saying respect all religions. Okay. Catherine says, are there any accounts in Buddhism of Jesus studying with holy men in India? There are no accounts of what Jesus did as a young man in the Bible and it's suggested that he went to Asia to study with other holy men. Is this anywhere in Buddhism? I heard one Ladakhi monastery, one sort of writing, handwriting sort of uh, history, it mentioned Jesus Christ uh, a few years is spent uh, in, in, I think, that part of India and some connection, some contact with Buddhist scholars, but I don't know if that's truly authentic or not, I don't know. I heard that. Later, you see, some people, actually, you see, Kasa uh, Chuti, investigate, you see, whether that book they are, or they try to find that book, but then the uh, Lama of that monastery uh, uh, remain in, in Tibet. So, 
they can also uh, cannot confirm whether such book there or not. So I don't know. But I think the this is sort of story. You see, there are sort of one, uh, what's say three wise men from East, isn't it? Oh. So uh, at that time in uh, Arab, that area, you see, consider uh, in East, uh, say some sort of city, Kazota, uh, Kazota. Uh, wisdom tradition there. So that kind of, I think, common sort of, sort of belief, I think, there. So, three person, uh, three wise men from East. So I think, I think, including Jesus Christ at the young, I think it must be some curiosity. What's wisdom in the East? Maybe. Already, this is some Kasota uh, uh, trade, some traders, uh, traders, or even I think pilgrims, pilgrimage. I think possible. I don't know. In any way, I think uh, it is quite, I think, a normal uh, tradition which come later. There must be just some sort of obviously, impact from previous tradition. In India, uh, when Buddha came, the Jainism already there, I think 30, 40 years earlier. So I think some concept from Jainism must be there. Then before that, some sort of different ancient uh, obviously, uh, non-Buddhist tradition, particularly like Sangha philosophy. So there's some sort of concept from ex past, so previous sort of Kasoda tradition. I think quite, that's quite logical. I think that. And some of my friends say in, in Middle East, in Arab, first Zorazotin, historically, and then Judaism, Christianity, uh, Islam. So it's some connection. I think I think possible, but I don't know. <laughs> so those young people should, if you have some interest, should carry more research work. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Theorella okay. from Perth asks. Why do I have this empty void where I feel lonely within, even though I have three beautiful kids and a husband of 35 years? I'm grateful and feel truly blessed, but why this empty space? Yes, it is true. Also, this body, some empty space there. <laughs> At least. At least with this two lungs, something full, then we can't, we can't do that. <laughs> oh, this joke, this joke. <laughs> yes, uh, now this is the point which I am talking. Uh, good husband, good children, I think most probably is a good furniture, good house, perhaps good job. That means good salary, so like that. But still, something, uh, something missing. That usually happen. Uh, some my friend, some American, uh, the president or chancellor of huge university. I think a student, several thousand. I think a few ten thousand. Uh, one occasion, as I went there, talk. It's a little bit of a long journey from my hotel. So in car, we just talk. And then that respected chancellor, you see, telling, eventually telling uh, 
about his own experience. And he often you see find found some kind of loneliness and very difficult to reach out to other human being. Uh, certainly, you see, uh, educated person and uh, materially as a chancellor, you say everything very good, but unhappy person. Then we just talk, 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 talk. Uh, then eventually, his face, this sort of the expression of his face, changing, changed. Later, I was told, before our meeting, the chancellor or president is a prefer remain in his in his own office lonely. Then later the Chancellor become much much active. So I think his staff member maybe prefer previous one. <laughs> he just remained <laughs> in his room. <laughs> so this you see shows uh, you see all the external facilities a modern, was a modern sort of modern sensor, all the facility, very good, but still unhappy person. So your case, not just to see your own case. I think within this hall, I think there are many people, outwardly very smart, but deep inside, something, something, because of empty space. <laughs> so it's a thing. Uh, think more wider way. Uh, if you just think your own sort of uh, family level, you yourself, then sometimes uh, even a small problem appears something unbearable. The same problem, look from wider perspective, then, yes, this is problem, but okay, like that. If you just focus in only that, then, oh, how bad, I'm also, also unlucky or something like that. If you look from wider perspective, then you are not causing that much sort of kasore, kasore, just having the stress or the seriousness like that. So. As Buddha stated, you are your own master. Ultimately, entirely depend on you. Uh, I cannot help you. You yourself have to find, you see, to reduce that kind of sad feeling. Isn't it? Like that. Yes? Next question. <laughs> Darren of Perth asks, how do we rid ourselves of ego of our mind. Ego. Uh, now I think I will say according ancient Indian psychology, the all this uh, emotion you see due to other factor, sometimes for example anger could be positive anger. So similarly, ego uh, is some kind of sense of strong self. That is, you see, uh, we cannot say itself good or bad. Uh, you see, with combination of combination with some other emotion, then that sense of ego sometimes go negative, sometimes go positive. So, for example, let's say in order to develop the infinite altruism and take, taking seriously about others' well-being, you need strong, I mean, you need sense of strong self. Otherwise, difficult to combat self-centered, selfish. Uh, then, that kind of sort of, uh, cause the feeling of 
somewhere to echo, right? It's positive. And then echo, uh, bully other, look down other, you feel something special and try to exploit and don't care about other side. So long you get some benefit, temporary benefit. Then such an ego is negative. So that's my view. So therefore, you see, uh, usually I call uh, self-centered uh, attitude. Just think oneself. And in order to get some benefit, even temporarily, no hesitation to harm other or exploit other, bully other, cheating other. That uh, now today's many problem is ultimately extreme self-centered attitude. Think others as a human brother sisters. Then how to care? other consider as a human brother they also want happy life they also have the right like my right so then if you understand that if you really familiar that kind of concept then impossible to harm usually you see just think oneself and don't care about others life so I think yeah, this is not a question of a religious sort of matter. This is a question of genuine world peace. Now look, this too much killing, even in the name of religion. Unthinkable. Now, for example, uh, Christian Islam problem within Christian in Northern Ireland, Protestant and Catholic problem. And then within Muslim, Shia, Sunni problem. And unfortunately, in Burma also now, Buddhist and Muslim problem. This very religion real sources or basis of compassion, tolerance. That itself now causing division and causing violence and thinking. So thinking these lines when constantly hear radio or see report We cannot remain indifferently, well, indifferently well. These people also human beings. We have to make some attempt. As an answer for such problem, use force. I don't know for, for the temporary, I don't know what, what kind of benefit, I don't know. But long term, Long term, definitely cannot solve by force. But we have to meet face to face, talk. Uh, then cool down their emotion. If we isolate, then their emotion become more stronger. If we bring together as a human brother sisters, then discuss what is their real sort of problem. And then we have to find mutually equal solution. That's the only way. Human problem must be solved by human way of approach, not weapon, not just criticize. Listen, they are view. And in the spirit of reconciliation, then try to find a solution through dialogue. That's the only way. I often see expressing 20th century becomes century of violence. Now this 21st century should be century of peace. Peace does not mean no longer any problem.
problem will be there. Uh, always there. So, the practical thing or realistic thing is whenever some potential of crisis happen, talk, through dialogue, solve, solving that problem. So therefore, I usually call this 21st century should be century of dialogue. That's the only way. So therefore, we have to, so you see this uh, particular problem itself difficult to solve easily. This is related with wider sort of humanities way of life, way of thinking. So I believe ultimately a universal level, some kind of holistic education. And also, I think like that. So therefore, the other question was what I. So the equation, I, I, I. We all have, as you are today, love oneself. That is very necessary. Uh, some people, some occasion, ask me, those people who have a self-hatred today, self-hatred. When I first heard that, I was shocked. Even animals love themselves. So that is the basis of our survival. If you really no longer any love to oneself, we will die. So now, when I first came to India as a refugee, then human population, uh, six billion, now seven billion. That means everybody take care of oneself. So our population <laughs> increase, uh, isn't it? One occasion in one city in Delhi, oh, one city in India, uh, you see, one, someone, you see, asked me, oh, human being, basically, very negative nature. Uh, so, uh, what is our future? And then I told him, no, human being's basic nature is more gentleness, more compassionate. So I told uh, that person, if you, uh, if you investigate in, this, in that city, how many people get human affection, under affection, sort of, sort of getting affection in, in the hospital, and old home, like that, in family life. So that usually not becoming news. So we take for granted taking care of others' life. We take for granted. For killing is something or news, something Kazoda, unacceptable. So it becomes news. So I told that person, if the majority of the people of that city is very much a violent one, then population will reduce. So now today, seven billion human beings. Uh, because of uh, human care, out of affection. Then, uh, according to the expert, uh, uh, so some report says, end of this century, uh, human population will reach 10 billion. So therefore, I'm going to throw the What, 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 what? So therefore, basic human nature is more compassionate. As also I mentioned before, the scientifically, they believe that. So we think we are social animal. Biologically, we equipped sense of concern of others' well-being. So, if we pay more attention about that, 
more knowledge about that, then our society will be more compassionate society. That's, I think, very possible. Biologically, we equip that. We all have to, that seed. Now, education, nurturing, further nurturing that, then our society will be happy society. Of course, this is uh, uh, because of the I mean, easy way. Now I'm 80 years old. Within my lifetime, I will not see that. But these young people, I think, will see a different world, more happier world, more compassionate world, if we make attempt now. What do you think? This question is from Sharon in Cessnock on the other side of Australia. With the evil of terrorism sweeping the world and terror at our front door in Australia, how can we find any forgiveness for these people? Long run, forgiveness is the only answer. There are sort of negative, <laughs> negative action, counter negative action, then endlessly. So now here, forgiveness does not mean you accept their wrongdoing. Uh, forgiveness is because of their wrongdoing, you let develop anger, hatred. That should not happen. So seeing more negative action, you should develop more sense of concern of their well-being. Then, eventually, if there is possibility, sh show our genuine sense of concern of their well-being. Then here, you see, sometimes, you see, you have to make distinction. Actor and action. Towards actor, is concerned, we should not develop negative feeling. We must keep compassionate mind. The action is concerned, sometimes we may need uh, appropriate or say they, because a countermeasure. But that countermeasure without negative feeling such as anger but sense of concern of their well-being. And in order to, uh, in order to stop their sort of long-time negative consequences, and then try to reduce their wrongdoing. So we have to make a distinction. Actors concerned must keep compassion, should not develop anger. Action is concerned appropriate certain sort of, sort of the, uh, measure to stop that. Here, you see, we, we have the ability to make a distinction when we carry, or say, because a confessor, confession. confession. At that time, you see, we make a distinction. I and my wrong action. So I now realize that's the wrong action. So I confess in order to, in order to protect yourself. Clear? So our own case, we can make a distinction. Action, wrong action, and actor yourself. So similarly, we can apply other, make distinction. They are action themselves. So themselves keep compassion, uh, sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, bring together. Action is concerned, sometimes appropriate action. Make clear, this is long run harmful for yourself. Now, for example, some of these people, you see, uh, sometimes they, in the name of their own faith, so actually they are, for example, the Burmese Buddhist 
uh, their action very, very harmful. The image of Buddhism. So if they really concerned about Buddhism, then their action is totally wrong. Clear. So uh, if they have some other reason, economy or power, then different matter. But if they really feel they face some, some kind of threat from other sort of faith, then this kind of so, uh, their action is totally wrong, very harmful for their real aim. They are supposed they are serving Buddha Dharma. Then their action really immense damaging image of Buddha, Buddhism, like that. Someone who asked me, what do you want as gift for birthday? Then I sort of respond, each person, you see, try to uh, think more about these things which I mentioned and try to become more happier person. That's the best gift for me. Thank you. So, thank you. Actually now, uh, naturally, I'm getting older. Sometimes it's a long, I mean, uh, a day long certain um, talks or teachings like that. Uh, afternoon, I feel a little sort of tiredness. But then I feel okay, at least, you see, some people uh, get some sort of city, uh, city, more awareness, and through that way, become more happier person. So then, worthwhile. That's my effort. A little bit tiredness, okay. So till my death, I fully committed to that promotion of human value and promotion of religious harmony. These two things, till my death, I committed. So please uh, think what I mentioned. This is for your own benefit, like that. So large number of people come here. I very much appreciate. So I think you uh, sacrifice your today, Sunday's holiday. <laughs> Isn't it? But you come. I appreciate. Thank you very much. See you again. <laughs>